Hi, welcome to Musha this week. Now, this is a very special program in the sense of the subject matter and uh, the people involved. And it's one of the biggest adventures we've had at Shaw. I'm here in Musha uh, talking uh, by way of the internet and Wi Fi with Eddie Stanielski, a lieutenant colonel retired with the Royal Regina Rifles. Of course, Moose Jaw people would know Eddie from his hockey history here when he was with, uh, growing up, played with the Regina Pats, won the Memorial Cup, MVP Memorial Cup, played in the NHL for many years. After his career in the NHL was over, Eddie went on to become a military officer with the Royal Regina Rifles and ended up retiring as a Lieutenant Colonel. And he's in, he's in, Normandy today, this morning, because we're filming this on June the 6th, and he's over there because next year is the 80th anniversary of the landing at Normandy by the Royal Regina Rifles. And Eddie's been promoting a, uh, a um, project that he's going to tell us about. And he's over there with Jillian, his partner in life, and and uh, she jumps in from time to time, so we'll never know when she shows up. But, but Eddie... <laughs> So, uh, so thank you very much for taking uh, time out of what's going to be an obviously busy day. It's about nine nine thirty here, and it's about five thirty there, and you have to be somewhere else in a while. So, let's just start off with saying welcome to Mujda this week, en français. Bienvenue à Mujda avec. Le, 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 le Normandie, France. Oh, oui. Lyle, it's great, <laughs> Lyle it's, it's great to be here uh, and be speaking to the people of Moose Jaw. It is a very special day, the 6th of June, uh, uh, 2023, the 79th anniversary of the D-Day landings, uh, Operation Overlord, which uh, all the military folks uh, understand and recognize uh, was a, a monumental event that included a whole bunch of young men and women from uh, Regina, Moose Jaw, Weyburn, Saskatoon, all of Saskatchewan and literally right across Canada. And uh, I'll speak more about the location that I am at uh, in a moment, but uh, everyone knows that uh, Operation Overlord, the D-Day landings was the largest military undertaking to date uh, with regard of air, land and sea forces. And uh, on that day, 6th of June, the Americans landed on two beaches, parachuted into depth. The British landed on two beaches uh, and parachuted into depth. And the Canadians landed on Juneau Beach, of course, and they uh, parachuted into depth also. And the Navy was offshore, the Canadian Navy supporting the efforts of the landings, the Canadian Air Force. And of course, pilots are trained in the CFD Moose Jaw, um, uh, the forerunners of the current flying that's going on there. They were flying top cover for the landing forces and were intimately involved in keeping the Germans away from the beaches. Um, and it, it was a, a monumental effort by the Canadians. By the end of the day, over 10,000 had landed on the beach. And um, by the end of the month, there was over 100,000. And by the end of the war, there was a million. 11 months from, uh, from that day, D-Day landing, there was a, a million Canadians that were serving in this, on this front. So pretty impressive effort. No, for certain. And then, of course, you mentioned um, there's there is some recognition that's taking place at, uh, at the uh, site where the Canadians came ashore. And of course, people watch uh, any any time there's history uh, talking about D-Day landing. There's always that landing craft coming in, dropping the front, and the soldiers going out onto the beach. And those are Regina rifles, are they not? Well, that's absolutely right, Lyle. The tip of the spear, the absolute tip of that 10,000-man surge onto the beach because uh, with the Regina Rifle uh, Regiment, at the, no, as they were known at that time, now the Royal Regina Rifles. And, of course, they landed at crusol sur mer uh, on the very, the very center of the Canadian beach of landings. The Winnipeg Rifles on their right, the uh, Toronto uh, uh, Queen's Own on, on their left. North Shore Regiment and the uh, you know the other regiments that came ashore behind them, yeah. but but it was the rifles who were at the tip of the spear, uh, among the very first to hit the beaches and the first uh, to liberate arguably one of the villages that uh, was to their front, and that that was significant. Uh, what became the, the rifles took about 180 
cows. You see some on the beach itself. Uh, excuse me. Um, and and, uh, and by the time the day was over and the Normandy uh, was cleared to the spot that I'm at now, there would be uh, literally 180 uh, fatal casualties to the regiment. Significant sacrifice just by Saskatchewan's uh, premier reg uh, regiment, infantry regiment, uh, arguably, uh, which is the Regina Rifles, and of course we recognize the North Shore, or sorry, the North Saskatchewan Regiment also. Um, now you, let's talk about where you are, because that's one of the darkest moments of the uh, invasion series and the fact that you're there uh, is quite a significant so explain to people where you are and why it's such a significant thing in our history well i'm i'm standing in the beautiful garden <coughs> excuse me, a beautiful garden in the abidar den which is about uh, eight miles inland from the beaches the normandy beaches you can see the beautiful uh, church behind me. Well, it was a church at that time. It's used for a di different purpose now, but it's been rebuilt. And if one was to go online and Google uh, the Battle of Abidar Den, uh, 1944, you'd see a completely different picture of that building behind me. Uh, it was the Regina Rifles who got here uh, in Ju on July the 7th and 8th and liberated this village 6th, 7th, and 8th of July in, in 1944. But what happened here on the 6th of June, a month earlier, uh, was not known until after the war ended in 1945. And what they discovered was that the 12th SS Panzer Hitler Jugend, who occupied this abbey uh, during the Landies, brought the prisoners that they captured from the Winnipeg Rifles and the North Shore Regiment and, and uh, several other uh, units, brought the prisoners here, interrogated them, and they executed, they, the, the, the Nazi 12th SS, executed. 27 of those young men in the courtyard just behind, just in front of me here, uh, over a wall. Uh, a terrible execution. They buried them there in that garden. That was not discovered, uh, as I say, until the spring of 1945. Um, when the Regina Rifles liberated the abbey here and they cleared through here, at great loss to themselves, over 200 casualties to actually take in the abbey here, and they pushed through here, uh, they did not know uh, that they were uh, walking on what has become hallowed ground uh, and the, the French people, the government of France has been tremendous in uh, restoring the garden here and, and putting up a fitting monument and memorial to the Canadians who were executed here and to the regiments who came through here and liberated, it, including the Regina Rifles. Now, of course, yeah, afterwards there was some, Kurt Meyer, who was in charge of the SS group of people, he was, uh, Charged in court, convicted, but the the, um, the punishment did not eventually seem to sit the crime for what uh, and uh, that's just the way it ended up. But it was certainly the the Regina Rifles saved some other people's lives by being able to push the Germans out of this building and out of this location. Uh, absolutely, this was a strong point for the. Uh for the Hitler for, or for Hitler's forces uh, here in Normandy and they were very much attempting to make a, a stand here and then drive the Canadians back uh, into the sea along with the British and Americans of course um, this was Kurt Meyer's headquarter and he was a regimental commander at the time that this happened by the end of the war he would be a, a general officer in the German uh, uh, SS he was captured and in, and court-martialed for the murders here was found guilty, was sentenced to, to be executed. Um, uh, meeting a, the book that one might, might want to read that would find very interesting and, and, and uh, outlines it all and everything that happened is called The Meeting of the Generals. And General Foster, who presided over the court martial, he, um, he found um, Kurt Meyer guilty of murder. He was sentenced to death. That was commuted after the war to life in prison that he would have to serve, according to the sentencing, in Dortmouth uh, Penitentiary in Canada. So he was taken to Canada, he was interned there, um, and, and, and uh, uh, spent eight years approximately, I can't remember the exact number, but I think it was eight years, and then it was commuted again a second time uh, for, for reasons that one would come read when they, if they were to read the book, Meeting of the Generals. And uh, that sentence was commuted and then commuted a second time and he was allowed back to Germany after he was um, 
uh, released and and he died in Germany uh, at the end of the war. But he did pay for his crimes um, that he, as a commanding officer at the time, he was responsible for. It's also interesting to note that the 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 Canadians who came through here and any Canadians who come and visit here or certainly a veteran if they come here, or a current serving member of the Canadian Armed Forces, they're held in very high esteem. And it is it is it's certainly fitting that uh, anyone who could uh, make the trip across next year for the 80th anniversary, they will be treated very, very well in Normandy, and it will be an amazing experience, especially for the young uh, folks from Saskatchewan and Canada who come over here and, and take in these battlefields and see what's happened here. Eddie, um, it's it's great for you to be there as a tour tour guide, which is your official title with uh, with next year's operation. Uh, let's, let's talk, talk about, about what, what the initiative is right, right now for the John Wayne Regiment, Regiment and, and for Saskatchewan to commemorate the sacrifices of the Royal John Wayne Regiment, Regiment during, during World, World War II. War II. So, so over to you. Over to you. Uh, certainly, Lyle. Well. Well, the initiative that has been started back in Saskatchewan for next year, for 2024, has been uh, named Op Calvados or Operational Operation Calvados. And uh, because we are in the Calvados region and it has uh, some significance to the uh, Regina Rifle Regiment, Royal Regina Rifles. And so the uh, initiative includes the erection of a uh, eight foot statue on the seawall at Corsell sur Mer that will be uh, unveiled next year uh, on D-Day, the 80th anniversary. Hopefully, we're inviting the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, to do that unveiling uh, here in Normandy. Um, if, uh, if everything comes together, that'll happen on the 6th of June, and uh, hopefully the Princess will be able to join us, because she is the Colonel-in-Chief of the Regiment of the Rifles, and we'd love to have her here to do that, and we're working towards that end. The statue itself is eight feet tall. It's going to weigh about four, uh, 450 kilo or about a thousand pounds. It'll be transported, we hope, to uh, France by the RCAF. And uh, once it gets here, it'll be permanently erected onto the seawall where the rifles landed, at the exact location where the Regina rifles came ashore. And that uh, discussion has already taken place with the officials here, including the mayor, of course, Elsewhere Mayor, who is absolutely ecstatic to the extent that they are going to redo the waterfront down, of course, elsewhere there to uh, favor the positioning of the of the monument. It'll be done right on the spot uh, by Grayson's bunker, very close, a mere feet from Grayson's bunker, one of the bunkers that was cleared by Bill Grayson, uh, who's known to many people in southern Saskatchewan uh, as a Regina ref who cleared the bunker himself and, and one of uh, the military medal at that spot. So all to say, it's, it's going to be pretty exciting if it all comes together, when it all comes together next year. A fundraiser has been launched in uh, Regina and in Moose Jaw to uh, raise the funds that will help finance this initiative. And it's looking very well at this time. It looks like uh, it's going to be, um, going to be uh, um, met. The targets are going to be met, and we're very happy. But the people of Saskatchewan can certainly go on the GoFundMe site. And can uh, and make donations to this uh, initiative. Well, we wish you good fortune. Is there a, a website that you might have handy that you could tell us about, or uh, should we just go to the Royal Regina Rifle Regiment website? Go ahead. You can you both uh, both work well. You can go you can go to, uh, onto GoFundMe, and you go to the Royal Regina Rifles Trust Fund. And that will take you to a portal where you can actually make a donation and immediately receive a tax uh, receipt for your donation. Uh, and all, obviously all donations um, are very well appreciated, large or small. And, uh, um, and again, the initiative, though it is the, the Regina Royal Regina Rifles Trust Fund, um, it's not just a, the Regina community at large that, that is being uh, perpetuated here. The soldiers were from Prince Albert, from North Battlesford, from our First Nations brothers uh, and sisters in, in the province. So, and, and literally all across Canada. We, the regiment even lost soldiers that came up from North Dakota and, and, and served in the regiment. And there are several that are buried in Beni Sumer uh, alongside the Canadians who served in the regiment. So it is 
It, it, though it is the Royal Regina Rifles and the Royal Regina Rifles Trust, it represents uh, certainly all of Saskatchewan and even a broader uh, swath uh, across Canada. Well, I know there's been a lot of publicity uh, locally. Uh, radio stations and TV stations have been covering this event today. And thank you for uh, be lending yourself to the uh, regiment to uh, carry on as a, as a figurehead, or, uh, you know, as someone of, of importance in this community. And uh, congratulations on all the successes that the military has given you, plus all, all the stuff that you've done to make Moose uh, a very popular and well-known place. So thanks, Eddie. Well, it Thank you, Lyle, uh, and I very much appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak to the people of Moose Jaw. Uh, as a son of Moose Jaw, it's my privilege always to uh, let folks know wherever I am that uh, I'm a son of Moose Jaw, born and raised there, and uh, got all of my beginnings there and, and continue to put Moose Jaw front and center in everything I do.